What's going on you lot? Hope you're all good. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is something that I am super pumped on. We're talking about the Sony a7 III. We're going to do a three year recap slash review and where I see its relevance in 2021. Before we get into all the series of the video, I just want to share with you a little bit of the camera's background and my ownership of it. It came out in mid to late 2018 and I bought it in start of 2019. I've been using it exclusively for all my projects, be it personal and client work, for YouTube, Instagram, websites and portfolio work. It's been in my hands the whole time. So I've got to know it inside and out, all its quirks, the workarounds and the stuff that just drives me insane. Right then, we'll get all the boring stuff out of the way first and then we'll get onto the real juicy bits about the camera. Throughout the video, I'm making references to what I believe to be the Sony a 7 iii's closest competitors. I know price is at the top of most people's list when they're trying to justify buying a new camera and at the minute the a 7 iii will set you back around £1,700 brand new just for the body alone. When it was released, it was around the £2,000 mark, so it hasn't dropped significantly over the three years that it's been out. Second hand, obviously you can get it at a fantastic price, around £1,300 to £1,500 will get you a decent one. Let's compare that to some of its competitors. The Canon R6 will set you back £2,499 brand new just for the body. The Nikon Z6 II is £1,999 brand new just for the body and lastly the Panasonic S5 is £1,699 brand new just for the body. As you can see the Sony a7 III is still very competitive when it comes to price but what you've got to take into consideration is that the Sony is two years older than all three cameras that I mentioned. Moving on to the specs, I'm just going to throw them up on the screen because nobody wants to listen to me waffle on about this spec and that spec. When you can just pause the video, pick out the ones that are important to you, or just have a quick scan through while I keep talking. To say the a7 III is two years older than the other cameras on this list, it's still holding its own very well. It goes to show you how much of a pioneering moment it was when it came out and how far ahead of the times it was for a hybrid camera. The key specs to note for me are how bad the screen resolution and the functionalities are compared to the rest and the video specs are starting to show their age, hence the lack of 4K60 and 10-bit colour. This is the point where the a7 III and Sony cameras in general start to pull away from the likes of Canon and Panasonic. Nikon have got third party lens support from Sigma and I know Sigma recently announced that they're going to start doing lenses for the Canon series but there's nothing been released at the minute. Sony has third party lens support from the likes of Sigma, Tamron and Samyang that all make fantastic lenses but an affordable price. I have no G Master glass, in fact I don't even own a single Sony lens. Look. I've got the Sigma 85, I've got the Sigma 35, I've got the Tamron 2875, I've got all the fives, and filming this is the Tamron 17 to 28. I think Sigma and Tamron make better lenses for the price point than Sony does. I still class myself as an amateur slash hobbyist. I do do shoots and projects on the side, but it's not my primary income. So spending multiple thousands on one lens is just not practical for me. Not when you can get the same sort of quality for cheaper or you can get two lenses for the price of one just like the vast majority of the camera world out there really take my kit for example is if this was all g master glass you'd be looking at upwards of seven and a half thousand pounds and you understand that most people just do this because they like to do it and i think it's really important for those people to understand that you can get g master production quality levels for a fraction of the cost Okay, let's run through some pros and cons that I found while owning this camera. The pros end for me, the low light performance is outstanding, there's really no need to worry when you start cranking the ISO up that your photos are going to come out looking like you're taking them on a potato, they still come out looking clean and crisp. The IBIS or the in-body image stabilisation is solid, you can easily capture slow shutter speed photos handheld, for example this photo was taken handheld and I think the exposure time was roughly about two seconds. If you pixel peep, it's not tack sharp, but it's not bad for a two second handheld exposure. The buttons on the back are fully customizable. You can really dial it in around your shooting style and shooting preferences. 
The weather sealing is really good, be it not the best on the market from Sony, but it's never let me down, and the fact that it has weather sealing is a bonus. Knowing you can go out, take your camera into some tricky situations, get it wet, get it dirty, and it's still gonna look after you. The battery life still beats most things on the market. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure the new Sony A1 uses the same battery as the A7 III. And the photo and video autofocus is still up there with the best of them. Okay, the cons then, or the slight little drawbacks. The biggest one for me is the screen. <sighs> that screen. The screen really, really irritates me. In a world where we watch things in 4K on us phones, tellies are all 4K, everything is just high resolution. And the screen, I can't lie, it is just, it's just poor. No word of a lie, on every shoot that I've been on, I've had to say to the client, these will look better on my computer or on a phone screen or whatever. Take whatever it looks like on the back of this LCD with a pinch of salt, they all look better. The screen for me is terrible and it only flips up, it doesn't flip out. The touch screen is only touch to focus. You can't touch it to change any of the settings. For me, it, it's just very poor. The next one isn't really a con, but I know people like to throw it in as a con. The menu system is a little bit weird, it is a little bit backwards, but once you've got used to it and you can understand where things are and you can't understand why they're there, but they are there, once you get used to it, it's not really a con, it's just, got, it's just something you've just got to get used to. So the menu system is a little bit weird. And this one is really personal, but the grip is slightly too small for me. So when I'm out shooting, my little finger sits underneath and it just gets a little bit uncomfortable in there. But that's all just personal preference and can be sold with a little grip extension. What would it take me to upgrade my Sony a7 III? I think is a really tricky question because honestly, I wouldn't trade it in against any of the cameras that are on the current market just to get into a specific camera body. I think it offers me too much value. I'd either use it as a B camera, a stills camera, or a backup camera. I am thinking about getting a second camera, but only in the shortcomings of the a7 III. So cameras like the a7S III or potentially the a7 IV, if that comes out with the certain specs that hopefully it will do, such as 4K 60 10-bit color, a flip-out LCD screen, and possibly a higher megapixel sensor. Those are the kind of areas that I wanna upgrade and get into, but the a7 III wouldn't go anywhere. Does that kind of answer that question? I, I hope so. <laughs> Should you buy a Sony a7 III in 2021? Okay, I'm gonna level with you. The answer to this question, or what I believe to be the best answer to this question, took me a really long time to come up. I don't think it's perfect. I don't think anyone would get it perfect, just because there is that much to consider and people's needs are different, people's preferences are different, and I wanted to cover as many boxes as I could. So, here goes. With the Sony a7 III being at the price point it is now, I think it is very tempting to get into this body just because it ticks a lot of boxes for a lot of people. However, I do think it is in a weird limbo phase, and let me explain. At the minute, I still think it is very competitive, but in a few years time, I do think it will start to show its age. Technology is moving incredibly fast at the minute and the big boys in the camera industry are trying to one-up each other at every camera release, which is only good for the consumer market, but I do think certain cameras will get left behind. If you're photo only and you're not interested in taking videos whatsoever, then I think the Sony a7 III is the perfect camera for you. I don't think the Sony a7 IV will offer you much more than the a7 III already does. You could argue if you're a still shooter, why don't you want to look at the a7R 3 You would have a point, but do you want the hassle of handling larger file sizes and the extra computing power required to edit those files if you shoot raw? If the answer is no, then the Sony a7 III is the way to go. And that rhymed. If you want it as a hybrid camera to shoot photos and videos, I don't think it's a simple yes. There's a few more things to consider the main one being the video specs. Even in the current market, they are starting to slightly lag behind its competitors. The lack of slow motion 4K is what's hindering the a7 III, in my opinion. If you feel you don't need any more than 4K 30 or 1080p 120, then the a7 III is definitely the way to go for you. But if you feel like you do need a little bit more than that and you do need some slow motion 4K, I would look at the other cameras on this list or wait 
if you have the luxury for the A74 or at least to get some more concrete specs churned up in the rumor mill. In my opinion, there's too big of a gap from the 1080p image and the oversample 4K image and that's just personal preference. Like I said, if those specs are good enough for you, then yes, I would still recommend the A7 III in 2021. In conclusion, the Sony a7 III is still a fantastic camera and very capable even by today's high camera standards. It's a great fit for a lot of consumers and will provide you with a lot of value. Should you buy one in 2021 is such a hard question to answer. Ultimately, it comes down to you, your needs and your budget. Any camera purchase nowadays needs to fit you, be it a camera or a lens. It doesn't have to be the latest and the greatest or some YouTuber spouting off saying, oh, you must have these specs or you can't create good content. Rubbish. It's all down to you and your needs. Hopefully in this video, I've shared my experiences and opinions enough to help you make a decision. And that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it or found it at least a little bit helpful. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button. And let me know down in the comments below if you're thinking about picking up the a7 III in 2021 or is there a camera you're waiting out for. And as always, if you wanna support this channel, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And I'll see you a lot in the next one. Peace.